<clears throat> okay, welcome back. Day five Seattle trip. i um, not feeling the best today, but I'm still going to narrate here and there. I want to throw in a little music kind of to help it along. So you're not listening to my um, froggy voice as much on this one. Uh, today we're going to head up to Ballard. It's um, Sunday. What Ballard does on Sunday is they have a farmer's market that uh, I've heard good things about. So I planned on um, going down to Ballard today. First, we're going to stop at this little art supply store called Push Pull. Push Pull is really like the neighborhood. I don't know. They they feature zines from local artists and creators. They have um, action figures that were made probably locally. They have uh, prints. It's also an art supply store. Um, and in the back, I think they meet up for different community artistic creative events. Some nice local merch here, some pins, some stickers. It's, uh, do I recommend going in here? Yes, if you're a creative person. Uh, if you're visiting and you like If you're visiting and you like seeing creative spaces and maybe want to pick up some art supplies while you're in the area, this is probably the the place to go. Definitely in Ballard, it's going to be their art store, I'm guessing. They have merch in the form of shirts. I don't know what if these are local artists or not, but it would make sense to me if they are. The moon was out this day. I love seeing the moon during the day. And then I uh, kind of walked a little bit to get down to the farmer's market. Unfortunately, like I recorded my entire walk through the farmer's market then when I got to, like, I went down and back. When I got to the end, I noticed I wasn't recording. So I did get some blueberry kombucha, I believe that was. It was tasty. Not not great, but good. Um, there's some pigeons. Okay. I went again to the farmer's market on my second trip to Seattle. Had a much better time down there. And this is a sign that is Shill Shoal Avenue, but you can see. Someone's taking a little bit of a creative license with that. Edgeworks is one of the climbing, um, what do you call these places? Places where you can go and practice rock climbing, mountain climbing, whatever it's called. This is the outdoor uh, wall they have there. But then the indoor facility is full of climbable walls. And then we're down at the locks. They have a nice little library here. But check out this list of rules and regulations. Ain't no way. You'll be there two hours trying to read all that, so that's very skippable, in my opinion. There's a map here. What's great about the locks is there's a fish ladder, with a fish ladder which I didn't get to check out. I was advised to check it out. I just decided, eh, it doesn't seem too appealing to me. Um, maybe next time. They have like a little museum inside here that uh, kind of is dedicated to the area, some of the different... Um, fauna and flora <laughs> that exists. They have an ongoing um, history movie playing down there, and then there's a upstairs with a little bit more, a little bit more interactivity, a little bit more of a historical edge to it. Some different things you can um, observe and admire.
a nice thing to check out. I don't think I'll ever need to go check it out again. But it was nice to see once. Not a big museum kind of person. As you can see, I kind of walk around. I observe what's there. Things usually don't catch my eye, but uh, it's, I think it's kind of important to be more careful and observant about history. That's why I don't understand things and I have to Google everything because I don't pay attention when I'm in museums or places where they try to teach you about the history of the country. There's an interactive thing that had buttons that I pushed and I didn't see anything. I think it's supposed to light up with arrows, but I'm not sure. I'm not seeing, yeah, I don't know. There's also this display showing you how locks work. Um, you could like, you could make the boat move and then the water levels would rise. But the water's indicated by like a colored glass panel there. I couldn't figure it out. Um, here's some info on the rain in Seattle. Rain in Seattle isn't actually as voluminous as one might believe. And here I'm at the actual locks. I was down there able to watch a boat being lifted up and passed through to the next level, but I don't think I recorded it for some reason. I just decided to enjoy it. Not everything needs to be on camera and shared with people across the internet. But there's plenty of videos showing you how locks work and canals. Is a canal a lock? I'm not sure. But also in this area is this nice little walking trail-y type thing. It's really pretty out there. It's pretty. I won't say really pretty. It's really pretty. I don't know. This guy was doing Tai Chi. I think he noticed me and he was ready to attack. So I had to run. There's a whale on a... Uh, Scooter? I don't know what that is. <laughs> they have a nice little rose garden type thing here. It's beautiful. It's a really nice area. I can, I can see myself coming out here to relax. Maybe, um, I don't know, read a book, have lunch. There's a nice winding path back there where you could jog or just go for a stroll. That's not the fish ladder. I don't know what that is. I don't know. There's a lot of water out here. I wasn't paying the best of attention, but it was nice to see um, the locks in action. Nice sculptures in the area too. There's a, a Nordic museum over there too. I kind of walked in and out. And then I found this little um, donut, donut, cupcake shop. Um, I don't remember if they were too pricey, but they look delicious, right? Good I think I ended up getting the Royale with cheese. This is like a black bottom maybe. I forget the name of this place. But there, there's the cupcake, it was good. And then we're off to this little shop called Monster. It's like a gift shop, basically. There was underwear, there were pins, there were shirts. There's this one Seattle Seahawks shirt I keep coming across in these little shops. And I think these are all from local artists, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it is a nice little, there's that Seahawks shirt. I'm, I'm, I really want to pick that up. Uh, then it was off to get something to eat, and I found this place called Serious Pie in Ballard. They have another location downtown, I believe. And it was pricey, but it was good. It's uh, Predator approved. And then we're off to Mox. Mox is a gaming store in Ballard. And it is massive. It has many different rooms that cater to... Sorry, I don't want to say cater to, that are kind of designated for a certain type of gaming like here's a Warhammer and a 3D gaming room here and there's some um, come over in here to some tables this is like card games but for like not competitive play you have this uh, amazing light thing here made of uh, <laughs> beta lands not real betas but a uh, collector's edition if you know what that is 
They're doing the modern tournament here, modern MTG tournament. And they have a little restaurant that's right in the building connected. It's a little, also a little pricey, but I can't see gamers going to this restaurant. I don't know. What do I know? I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not a part of this community. Who knows? Maybe they get a discount, but the store is amazing. It's, it's quite packed. Once again, I think I mentioned in the last video, it's not my kind of store. I like a little bit more dirt and grime and like unwelcome, uninviting type of atmosphere. This is like family friendly, gamers of all ages. It's what's needed in uh, society to bring people together. It's just not my thing, you know? You know? It's the eating section. There's some uh, merch, some, uh, what do you call it? Gamer themed apparel. He is one, two, seven. No one knows what that means. I know what it means. You would not know. These are like deep cuts almost. I wish I didn't know. I wish I had some other knowledge in my brain other than knowing what that shirt means. Oh, there's some nice sculptures in the area. Oh, some nice murals. A lot of murals around. Brightens up the city a little bit. I don't know why I was filming this. Oh, I'm here waiting for the bus. One thing that's awesome is they had this little whatever ticker thing that tells you when the next bus is supposed to arrive and I, I think that's very amazing very amazing because that's a big city thing then we're taking our trip back across um, the bridge into downtown look at all these all these boats pretty amazing field again somehow I ended up back like near the international district which is close to where I was staying but uh, I don't know not that close it's like still like a 20 minute walk there's a cornhole going on down in the <laughs> international district and some uh, table tennis I don't know why I was over here oh we're back we're back at the hotel here there's always something in the hotel I didn't uh, film and show so There's an antique market down along the pier. So I was in there for a little bit. I kind of just scan around and look at everything. Wasn't in a buying mood this day. Because anything I pick up during this trip, I'm gonna have to put it in my suitcase somehow. And I had a very average, small size suitcase, like a carry-on size. So weren't coming back with too much. And besides, I just wanted to um, you know, understand what Seattle is all about. There's an older version of me that would have, uh, you know, gotten out my phone and started checking prices on everything. But that person is long gone. That person died. Okay. That version of me is not here anymore. This is the, you know, take it all in. Still a little bit scatterbrained. As you can see, I'm kind of just panning around. Don't know what I'm doing in here, but, you know. Honestly, I do remember looking for an art desk. I thought it would have been cool. And matter of fact, I think it just passed a pretty cool desk. But I don't know. I was, oh, if I'm in an antique store, I can't get it out. I'm so excited to tell you this. I'm usually looking for a, an older antique um, drawing table, art desk, something like that. Yeah, reseller me is looking at these books like, should I? It's not me anymore. Cool, cool place to check out if you're into antiques. If you're into old stuff, come here. Here again, there's a giant boat. Pier 62, yes. 
Yeah, I'm realizing I don't think I edited a lot of this stuff, so I'm seeing this for the first time along with you. We'll edit it and then we'll put it out, so it'll seem like I'm not confused at what I'm looking at right here. And they had that, I think I've commented about this before, this little floating plank area. You can walk down to it and uh, kind of sit out on this little, I don't know what it is, it's just a little, it's just a little, you know, a place to dock your boat, but it kind of bobs with the waves. Also noted some jellyfish when I was uh, on this floating thing. I said, what the heck? We're at this place called Fat Shack. Uh, I wanted some wings, so once I confirmed that that place had wings, I went in there. Then we're back at Luna Cafe. I like the Luna Cafe. Not so much for the coffee drinks, just the layout is cool. It's this wall of photographs, but I usually was getting this weird, I don't know, it's like these refresher style drinks that are like made with like real fruit and not too much sugar, so it worked out well for me. All right, this one's gonna come to an end. I'm gonna show you my mango drink, I think, and uh, some, the Buff 28 wings I got, the garlic parms, and the, uh, the burger, which was very mid. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy this and talk to you later.